Maddie from Hello Interloper here. Today we're going to be going over the two important events that are going on in Blood Brothers at this moment. First of which is the first anniversary campaign, and second of which is the special dungeons number 11. First though, we're going to be going over the first anniversary campaign, simply because it is so beneficial to every single player out there. If you have not been on Blood Brothers lately, log in right now, and I'll tell you why in just one moment. So, uh, the first anniversary campaign, of course, is celebrating the first anniversary of Blood Brothers, because the first anniversary is approaching quickly, and, of course, they want to celebrate by giving us deals in the cash shop and whatever, which, of course, uh, is not beneficial to everybody, because most of us do not spend. However, there are some things that are being given away for free, some of which are very, very ridiculous. First off, as soon as you log in, you will get a login bonus. Uh, this is rather similar to the 10 million players campaign in the sense that we will be getting scarlet coins and some bugles and also a currently non-tradable familiar called Lucia Stitcher Witch. The only difference is she is a rare non-epic so you don't have the opportunity to just you know buy a pack, get the second one and fully evolve it. You're gonna need more. So, uh, Lucia Stitcher, which I'll quickly go over her, uh, she's rather interesting because she's pretty much the first familiar that we have seen since, um, I don't really remember what her name is, but the Thanksgiving special familiar, um, Centaur or something, I don't really remember. But, yes, she has Greater Recall, which is pretty nice. Ah, here we go, Freyla the Bountiful. Uh, but yeah, it revives and fully restores HP of adjacent familiars, so um, it's pretty nice. It's got a 50% chance when completely maxed, and by two allies adjacent mean on left and right. So uh, she seems rather useful. And then if we see her final stats, her stats are quite nice. Um, she's got a pretty low wisdom which is a little bit surprising because uh, Greater Recall seems to be a magic-based sort of thing, but it actually is not affected by Wisdom at all. She has a pretty good defense, so she stays alive for a while, and of course this is sought after for somebody who's going to be reviving your team. You want them to be alive as long as possible. And she has a very high HP, so she's very durable. Now what I find kind of funny is that she's kind of holding uh, a stitched together mandrake, if you see over there. So um, she's also stitched together herself. If I go to her first evolution here, see, she's got some stitches. So uh, kind of interesting design. Now, of course, back to this anniversary craziness. You do get scarlet coins and bugles, which will be useful later on. Unfortunately, not useful during special dungeons because you don't really need bugles. But uh, yeah, that's the first of your little prizes. Now, there are other prizes. Depending on how long you have been playing, you will get a certain amount of crystal sets and scarlet coins, which of course is an amazing bonus because it's not very often that we are given scarlet coins, mostly for when the Blood Brothers team messes up something or it's down or whatever. But the crystal sets are of course a really nice bonus. Now there is one other way you can take advantage of this, get some awesome free stuff, and that is through Jubilee Coins. Um, if you click this little icon on the front page of when you load up the game over here. It'll look just like this. You click that, it kind of shows all the wonderful things that the first anniversary campaign is bringing. Um, and if you scroll down a little bit longer, there will be something about a sending notifications campaign. So you just would click that and you can send five notifications each day. And basically they will give you a bunch of names of players that haven't been playing lately, haven't been around for a while, and just click send. Do that five times. There's a limit, of course, it won't let you send more than five, but magically, in your wagon, you'll have five Jubilee coins. Now, the beautiful part about Jubilee coins is that the only thing you can get from these coins are uncommons, rares, and epics, which is pretty good because you have a fairly high chance of either getting some nice fodder 
uncommons that you can easily use for scale ups, but also the rare chances are extremely nice. So far from using Jubilee coins, I've used 15 Jubilee coins and gotten two rares, which is pretty good for something that's completely free. The best part is you can do this every day. So five Jubilee coins every single day until this campaign ends, which seems to be, I think, May 5th, something like that. Something pretty late. But uh, take advantage of this while you can. Actually, I think it might be May 31st now that I think about it. Let me just double quickly check. Yes, it looks like 531, May 31st, uh, this whole campaign is going to end. So take advantage of this. Unfortunately, as expected, this is going to mess up the bazaar prices even more. But if you are a newbie and currently have n pretty mediocre team, this is your chance to get some great things to trade off in the bazaar or use on your own team. Um, and yes, celebration packs, that's what uh, they call the Jubilee coin packs. Um, of course, there are celebration packs that you have to pay for, which include Lucia, which of course is good if you want something like that, or a pretty big spender, but um, you do need four of her, or even more, up to eight, because she is a rare. So uh, that's about all you really have to know about the first anniversary campaign. Basically, if you have not logged in lately, do so, because you will reap the benefits and be able to use it for much later. Now, of course, we have Special Dungeons, which is the current event that's going on, and this has been an extreme reimagining of the whole event. Um, Previously, there were three towers. There are no longer three towers, there are two towers. And pretty much each tower has all the difficulties. And there are now 15 floors, it seems. Um, but either way, you choose the Keystone Tower or the Magic Tower. The prizes depend on which one you choose, but it starts off being very easy, having three familiars to fight. So up until floor number five, you'll be fighting three familiars. Then past that, you'll be doing four. I'm assuming, I haven't gotten that far, but in zone number 10 or floor number 10, past that, it'll be five familiars that you fight. And that would be as if you were going through the third toughest tower in the old event. But uh, they added a pretty cool mechanic in the sense that every five floors you go through in the Magic Tower or the Keystone Tower, you get half of a token. And this token will be able to open a special tower pact. When you have one half of the Keystone Tower coin and one half of the Magic Tower coin, you can combine it into this tower coin. Now, um, unfortunately, I don't have much information about uh, which bosses show up on different floors simply because I have not gotten that far yet and the information is currently not up in the wiki for me to tell you. But um, depending on which one you go into, you either fight Rosalba or Rotoros when you're at floor number five, and then Zabak the Six Sickles is currently the boss that you will fight uh, that's been added newly to this whole event. Now with the did here is they're bringing back old special dungeon um, rewards or bosses such as um, Winter Warlord, Queen Lamia, Beowulf, so on and so forth, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but of course, it really makes the whole worth of these familiars a lot lower than they were previously, further kind of collapsing the whole bizarre economy. Um, I could go on and on about how. The bazaar is going crazy, but, um, yeah, <laughs> not much that can be done there. So, uh, also, of course, there will be a reward based on points and ranking. We have a new legendary, and Mathilda, or Matilda, the Black Widow, is the rare, also given out when you get a million points in this event. There are, of course, event allies to help you get points. Maximum of 10 event allies can be recruited. And I um, guess I shall go over the actual familiars. But first of all, I just want to say, um, if some of you are confused about this event, don't worry, I am too, and we'll update you guys on how exactly this whole 
boss scenario works uh, as soon as I get to that point. Now, um, looks like Ball, the Thunder Lord of Hell, is our legendary. And unfortunately, we don't have an infographic giving us an estimate of his max stats here. And uh, nobody has the perfect evolution stats up at the moment. But we do know that he has a skill called Spark Fist which is a 170 attack multiplier, deals heavy lightning damage to three random targets. Um, basically, it's just like Ice Fist and Flame Fist. It's pretty much the same thing except lightning damage. Um, so nothing too exciting there. It is a new skill, but just doesn't really bring anything new to the table. And then, of course, the second evolution of this there is a max stat estimate, so you can assume that his perfect evolution stats will be higher than this, um, maybe by a few thousand. But it seems that he has extremely high agility, but lower defense than usual. Um, attack is the second best stat, then HP, then wisdom. So uh, then we have Matilda, the Black Widow, and uh, she seems to be a dark elf of some kind sword Darklander. Uh, and of course, we have seen Venom Storm a million times, but that is her current skill. 150 times attack multiplier, poison, 30% chance, deal heavy poison damage to three foes. So uh, she probably will be useful in raid bosses. And uh, let's see her max stats. They do have an estimate, of course, but you can assume that um, the perfect evolution stats will be a few thousand more than this. Uh, she has pretty low defense, pretty low HP, but her attack and agility are pretty high. Um, I'm not exactly sure if she's going to be better than Oniroku or not. And then, of course, the boss. This is the boss, Zabak the Six Sickles, and unfortunately I'm not exactly sure why, but uh, his max stats and his fully evolved form are currently not on the wiki. As soon as I get an update, of course, I will update it by making a new video. So far, they only have the second evolution up, and uh, it's kind of disappointing that we don't really know the other evolutions. But needless to say, the Wikipedia is constantly updated, so we'll probably have it tomorrow or in a couple days, and I will make a new video. Um, but yeah, as soon as I get more information about this, as soon as I get farther in the special dungeons itself, I will update this video by making a part two of sorts and tell you more about this event. But uh, anyway, hope you guys have the best of luck in this event. Remember, make sure you recruit event allies ASAP because uh, you don't want them to already have their event ally list full. Anyway, good luck everybody and take care.